Everything fixed. With my luggage. Of course. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Miss Julia Laretti, I believe. Yes. I am from the ministry. My car is waiting to take you to your hotel. Yeah. This way, please. Uh, you will excuse me, but I thought uh, everything is taken care of. Uh, in here, please. Did you say you are from the ministry? Yes, that is right. I did not know they had foreigners in the British ministry. Oh, my dear Miss Laretti, this. It's the foreign ministry. <laughs> Come on, in here. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Bates. Hey, stop that car! Read all about it. Bam Boss to the Lodge. Thank you, sir. Bam Boss to the Lodge. Play extra. Play extra. Bam Boss to the Lodge. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sit down, gentlemen. I just received this cable from the Bosnic police. I will read it to you. Scientist calling himself a vampire is a man named von Husen, born in Bosnia in 1894. He is a descendant of Baron von Husen, whom legend immortalized as a vampire. For reasons of his own, von Husen claims to be an earthly reproduction of his notorious ancestor, owing his continual existence to the consumption of human blood. Needless to say, there is not the faintest vestige of truth in his claim. But it is not denied that he is a scientist of considerable repute and his activities should be restrained. Restrained? That's putting it pretty mild, isn't it, sir? Thirty women have disappeared from the London area in the last six weeks, sir. And six weeks ago, Van Hoosen is believed to have arrived in this country. That's quite true, but I think the connection is coincidental. Personally, I believe we are dealing with a dangerous character. Not for what he claims to be, but for what he is. A fanatical scientist with a stupid gang of men who have allowed themselves to be mesmerized by a legend. What about this girl, uh, Julia Loretti? It looks to me as though she may be of particular interest to Van Hoosen. She was bringing to this country a chart showing an important uranium deposit in South America. I expect Van Hoosen would like to get his hands on that. <laughs> There is still no clue as to the whereabouts of Miss Giulia Loretti, daughter of the famous Italian scientist Geromino Loretti. Miss Loretti arrived in this country this afternoon and is believed to have been kidnapped by agents of the mysterious scientist known as the Vampire, whose suspected presence in England is causing widespread alarm. I believe... The thing they can't export and won't deport. Put out a box of matches, Dean, and a little drop of you know. Eight weeks rent. Come on, hand it over. Shame on him for worrying you, Mrs. Raleigh. He's an old vampire. You're telling me. And to think I let that man have two pennies with a gun and lashings from under the counter. Yes. And it's still eight weeks. You're a poor creature. A poor creature. Don't just have me a box of matches, dear. Come on. Hey, I bought clear out. 
Did you hear what he said? Did you take a note of that? Cut the cackle. I'll come back later for the you know. You know what? Cut me eggs, duck. Yes, ducks, but they're not duck into their head eggs. Sally's not laying today, it's molting. You better! Bampard lends a new victim. Bampard writes again. Hush, Ben, sir. Bampard writes again. Read all about it. Bampard lends a new a victim. A vampire. Ben it must Bart mean Bart you. Again. Haven't you been following it in the papers? This is the fifth victim, this is. It could be any of us next. Any of us? Yes, it could even be you. Me? Uh, well, what does he do with his victims? He drinks their blood. <sighs> drinks their blood. Every drop. Every drop. Every drop. What a thirst. Yes, and he only picks beautiful, young, unattached girls. That's us. Oh, don't talk a lot of nonsense. What could he expect to find on a scraggy lot of old boiling fowls like you? Not even feathers. Mr. Man, your manners are positively disgusturating. Ain't they, girls? What there is of them. Pity the vampire didn't spill it your way, where you can't go pestering decent folk. Well, I'm only doing my duty, no more or no less. And if everyone did their duty as good as I do, I wouldn't have to go round flicking them out on their ear for trying to live rent-free. You're a blood... And what do you think you are, eh? You're a parasite, that's what you are. You're as brazen as they come. Are you ashamed for owing me the money that you can't pay me? No. Well, I'm asking you, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Not a thing. <laughs> No, there ain't. And if there was, I wouldn't tell you. What time shall I come back for the, you know? Come on, open it up, open it up. Let's see what it is. I'll chew the nosy parker. I'll see Bad news, ducks? Not at all. It's from Ireland. And it tells me that my uncle Jeremiah's died and left me the whole of his fortune. Oh, that lot of fortune she'll ever get. Come on, let's see what it says. Here, give me that back. Give me that back. You're reading me stable information. Give me my telegram back. <laughs> Stone the crows, listen to this. 
Uncle Jerry Myers will found yesterday. He has willed everything to you. Including the family play. I'm dispatching it today. Well, where, where is the dear old lady? Oh, what is it? What is it? Come on. Come on, give us a hand. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Get some in the dust at all. Stop it, stop it. It reminds me of an English summer. Good evening, Theda. Good evening. You had better go to the master, Hitchcock. He will be rising shortly. At once, Theda. At once. Tonight, aren't you, Till? Well, I've been to the pictures. Anything good? Humphrey Bogart. Oh, I do think he's lovely. Yeah, wouldn't that some of them movie stars do a spoil night work? Well, they do, by all accounts. <laughs> Creepy sort of joint, this, isn't it? Very damp. What's the matter? So you've noticed it, too. Notice what? This place, you said it was creepy. Oh, I do feel peculiar. Where? I mean about this place. I think they've all gone loopy in there. Ah, don't be silly, Tilly. I trust you rested well, Master. Very well, Hitchcock. Now on. There will be little rest for any of us. Will you be working in the laboratory tonight, Master? Of course. Master? Yes? I'm curious to know why you always sleep in your evening clothes. Very early. Yes, Master. <laughs> I was buried in them. Sleeps in a coffin? Don't be dark. I tell you, he does. I've seen it. Where? In his bedroom. He hasn't got a bed in there. He's only got a coffin. Listen, my old Aunt Agatha likes sleeping in a rocking chair. Nothing unusual about that. The old boy prefers a coffin. Well, that's his funeral. Funeral? Now, look here. Let me tell you something. Don't go poking your nose into other people's business because it only causes trouble. And trouble's the one thing we all want to avoid. What's that? I don't know. But I'll catch it if they find you hanging around. There is the master, my dear Frida. I think it's... Have ah. you brought Miss Loretti? No, master. There is a general alarm. It was not safe to bring her straight away. So? I will bring her later, in the usual way. That is good. Ah. Unfortunately, she appears to have conducted a romance during the voyage with the British naval. We had to take the young man, too. Is she attractive? Oh, she seemed to have everything in the right place. Good, very good. All right, all right. Leave us, Hitchcock. My dear Anton, the time has come when I have to acquaint you with my latest achievements and my future plans. I am honored, Master. Until now, I have existed in the minds of the people as a legend, a vampire created by evil. But the years have not been wasted, Master. Your long life has allowed you to outstrip the forces of science. I know. Now at last, I, Van Hoosen, am ready to fulfill my destiny. I have created weapons 
by which the armies and machines of our enemies can be destroyed. For instance, look at this, Anton. A turn of the dial, so, and a thousand aeroplanes can be destroyed. An other turn, and ten battleships can be blown up at sea. Unbelievable! And what is this for? This is the robot control. I intend to build 50,000 robots. 50,000? Yes. But how many have you built so far? Uh, uh, one. To build the rest, I need an almost unlimited supply of uranium. And Miss Loretti is the key to that. Ah. And if I'm not mistaken, there's the news of my robot. Yes. It has left our secret factory in Ireland and arrived in Liverpool. It is being sent here by road. My friends, this is a great moment. Our victory is in sight. You have chosen a queer nom de plume, Professor. Dr. Riley. <laughs> to help the driver. Good. The robot is here, Master. Wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. Be careful. It is fragile. Get up. <coughs> Fool! Sorry, Gabby, let us in, Dan. Ah, it wasn't my fault. Who do you think I am? Yes, I'm yes, stuck in your face. I'm not going to go on here. I'm sorry, Tilly, you can go. But I'm just going to tell you. That is enough. What's that? It is nothing. Go to the kitchen and stay there until I call for you. Oh, all right. <laughs> For the first time, you will see my finest creation, the perfect man made man. No Frankenstein with all the weaknesses of the flesh. This electronic marvel is a super robot of all times. This indestructible god of man. This great, great, this great... What is this? It must be human. Insane. Is this a nightmare? Where is my robot? My beautiful robot! Maybe it ran out of juice? <laughs> we are the victims of strange circumstances. Oh. Listen. To Mrs. Riley, 14 Russian Row, SE19. Dear madam, as per your late uncle's will, we send here with the family plate, etc. Yours faithfully, Fleesome, 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 and Grab, solicitors. Master, was that your nom de plume, Riley? Perhaps there has been some mistake. I see what you mean. You mean a robot has gone to this Mrs. Riley? Perhaps. 
Yes. We must think. We must plan. Come. Mommy. inside it. I hope it's all right. Riley, Riley that's me. For you, special delivery. Special delivery. That's why you put it through the window instead of putting it through the letterbox. Shouldn't get that through the letterbox. Well, what is it anyway? Yeah, it? I know. The family plate. What? Me portion from me Uncle Jeremiah. <laughs> but don't well, stand me, idiot. Let's get it upstairs. Come on now, walk over there, boys. Come on, give me a hand. Good old You've got it. Up, up, up. Now this way. that I forgive you all for the catty things you said about me. I also want to say that I forgive myself for casting nostalgias upon your carriage. Yes, we know all about that, but we want to see what's in the box. And it'd better be good that some rather damage the copper. Here, be careful. Now, boys and girls, stand back and leave it the rest to me. Now, come on, this way. Don't be all day. Good Lord, be. It's me, Uncle Jeremiah. And look what they've done with him. They canned him. And me without a tin old in the house. What's the matter with you? That's all it is, tin. I trouble you to treat the late departed with respect. What a fell. I know, with our airs and graces. But a home way fire this set, that's all it is. I mean, see this. Go on, get out, my lot of you. Go on, get out. Let's have another news. Let me have five minutes alone with this. Good Did you hear what he called me? That's reformation of character. Old he called me. Me, that's in the prime of my life and the middle of my sorrow. I don't want any of this stuff moved. That crystal set might fetch a bit. So you'd love me, Uncle Jeremiah, would you? You pink eyed blue nosed bottle next door. You're all getting out of here tomorrow and I'm coming round with an order of possession. It was announced in Washington this afternoon. What, sir? It was announced in Washington this afternoon. Me. Henry, you will buy a done-up dog's dinner, done by a fictitious old faggot, gypped by a ginned up old... As we're talking personalities, I've a few things I'd like to say to you. You're a poor creature. Here is a special announcement. Scotland Yard is now following up information which it is hoped will lead to the arrest of the person known as the vampire, whose identity remains a mystery. Speculation continues as to who will be the next victim. Southeast 19, Master. 14 degrees. Excellent, my dear Anton. We are dead on 14, ration row. Midnight. The band should be there by now. I think 
I'm in direct contact with the robot. I should get a reaction at any moment. There's a response. We are in contact. Switch on to voice. I will give it instructions. Master calling robot Mark 1. Master calling robot Mark 1. Can you hear me? Over. Excellent. Now listen to me carefully, Mark 1. You will go in search for the woman Riley. You will pick her up, but do not injure her. You will take her to the pan outside the house. What are you doing here? I just stopped for a rest. You can't hang about. Come on, get moving. Say, look here, copper. Are you moving or have I got to run you in? Now make up your mind now. You will keep hold of the woman until you're brought here. Now record instructions and signal. Right. Nothing can stop it now. My dear Anton, this is power. <laughs> Mark one will follow it. Take over. Where do you want to go to? Oh, oh, take me back to Cork. Cork? Ah. <laughs> that strikes a familiar note. Oh. Sure, you're still on the beam? Yes, Master. 
Wait. Some fool has reversed. I increase the R. Make control. Contact. We found him. Yes. Mark one. Mark one. You're on the beam again. Now follow it home. Follow it home. Drop me just round the bend, old man, will you? Thank you very much. That jolly decent old loser. I didn't take you too far out of my way, did you, I hope? He's on the way. Anton scatter the others around the house to help it when it arrives. I take the control. You should be here by dawn. Yes, master, master. I think there is something you should... What is that, Anton? It must be dawn breaking, master. Doesn't he? What is this? Disappears now, it's attributed to the vampire. And yet we don't even know for certain if the man really exists. We're doing everything we can to trace him, sir. The entire force, down to the lowliest constable, is on its toes. How is the woman Riley? She's quite done now. I've given her a sedative. Good. The smell of his Loretti is, for a time being, we must keep him locked up. And what about Miss Loretti? She's lovely. I'm going to deal with her when Anton brings her in the morning. Will she be arriving with the dummy? Of course. Do you wish to see Mrs. Riley? Yeah. Here is her child. Hmm. A poor specimen. But the right group. An excellent vintage. Where is she? In the dining room. Splendid. I feel in need of a tummy. I'm going to look at her. There's something queer going on in this house. Only last night, and I couldn't have been dreaming, a man all made a tin come in, making a noise like a motorcycle backfiring. You want to be careful what you eat, especially before you go to bed. All right, smarty, but you see, something's going to blow up in this house one of these days. Silly till. Blimey, you can't half put that stuff away, can't you? Well, thanks for the beer, Doc. <laughs> See you at tea time. Quite stop creeping in like that after what I've been through. What are you looking at me like that for? Ain't me hatch on straight? My dear lady, are you feeling better? We found you in the garden a little tipsy. Tipsy? Me tipsy? Why, that's an insult to us, Rileys. Do you know there isn't enough of this stuff in the world to make me dizzy? Never mind tipsy. Won't you sit down? You must be tired. Oh, you're a real gentleman, you are. Huh? Do you know you're the first man that's ever been nice to me since the curate took us girl guides out camping? When I came in, I saw you looking at that painting. Do you like bats? Oh, I hate them. They give me cold shivers up and down my brisket. It's a great 
pity. That happens to be my brother. Well, I shall have to be going now. You see, I let me be this drag on to simmer. Wouldn't you prefer a nice, juicy steak about two inches thick? Underdone, lovely and red in the middle. Oh, lead me to it, lead me to it. And I promise you, I won't split on your butcher. A liver for breakfast. Plenty of liver with the blood running out of it. Oh, my darling man, do you want emergency ration? No. I want you to stay here and work for me. You shall have steak and liver every day. All day. You need feeding up. Oh, yes, I'd love to, I'd love to. But I must be going now. It's Mr. Higgins. It's me rent. Great. If you work for me... Here. You'll be able to buy a row of houses. Five us. Five us. And not a book inside to grab them. Then it is settled. My housekeeper will look after you. Thank you. This is not enough. I mean, it's too much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And don't strain yourself, my lovely little group three. Well, may I be bitten if he's not smitten. I clicked. <laughs> What's happening to the lights? While you are here, Mrs. Riley, you will see a great many things that you will not understand. Tell you this is Mrs. Riley, who will share your room. How do you do? And a very nice room it is, ma'am, a very nice room indeed. And a nice bit of cold comfort, too. I hope you will be very happy with us, Mrs. Riley. I'm sure I shall, ma'am. I'm sure I shall. And may the saints sprinkle you with sailors on shore leave. I have to make myself at home. Well, I shouldn't bother if I was you. You won't last long. None of them does. Oh, so they doesn't, do they? Well, let me tell you something. I'm here for keeps. And another thing. The boss has got a crush on me, so put that in your smoke and pipe it. Well, old crackpot stuck on you don't make me laugh. <laughs> you lot on the other side of your face one of these days, my fine lady. And don't you call that darling man a crackpot. Well, it's time you got your mind off men. It's your time of life. It's my time of life. I may look a bit of a tag end on the outside, but on the inside, I have a heart like a girl going to the palette and dance for the first time. Excuse me. And what makes you think the governor's got a crush on you? You ought to have seen him pleading for me to stay on his bare knees when I told him I was going home. Well, how'd you get here? It was a dream. In fact, it was worse than a dream. It was a awful nightmare. I dreamt I was being kidnapped by a tin man. A tin man? Yes, that's what he was. A man all covered in tin line? Yes, all dressed up and done up like a tin of Russian crab. Oh. Ah, go on. It was only a dream, brought on by too much of that lovely leafy water. No, it wasn't, because I've seen it too. Have you? Crikey, you're not going to take any chances, are you? What's that? That's my thing up, ma'am. I 
don't like being watched when I'm having my breakfast. Why don't you go and play with your top? Master's orders. He told me to see that you eat it all up. Ah, that darling man. He said I wanted building up in my satellite area. <laughs> You're being got ready. <laughs> you ought to get that seen to before it becomes a habit, Lofty. Are you ready for your light task, Mrs. Riley? Light task? I am so full of underdone, I can scrub every overdone doorstep from Land's End to John O'Groats. Oh, no, the master does not wish you to wear yourself out. Just lightly dust the dining room. Lightly dust? Lightly dust. Just a flick here and there. That is all. Goody, goody, I'm going to love this job. Oh, sorry. It's better for you not to know, Magsy. Yeah, but I, I've been trying. It might upset your very delicate mental balance. For your allowances. I'd rather have a bottle of stout. The master's orders. You are to have liver. See that Mrs. Riley finishes up her liver, Hitchcock. You bet I will, ma'am. Archie, liver from the allowances. You're being got ready. Being got ready for what? You'll see. <laughs> and I thought I'd seen everything. Specially prepared for you by the master. Eat it. What are you doing here? I'm on my beat now. Does your beat include the kitchen? He's beaten the little bit in the front. Now he's going to beat the little bit at the back. Aren't you, Freddy? Yes, ma'am. Eat it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. One old bag full, ma'am. Blowed if you weren't right. The boss must have fallen for you. Yes, I don't know how he held his passion back. His eyes were all aglow, and they were so hot. He scorched me collarbone. You're being got ready. <laughs> You're telling me. Lovely day. Here, swell, mm. nice and fresh. Yeah, I hope so. And the funny thing about all these girls disappearing. Yeah. Just seem to vanish into thin air. Makes you think, don't it? <laughs> Haven't found out yet where they get to, have they? <laughs> no. Investigations are proceeding. What are all these things? Say, well, why don't you scram and knock off a motorist for parking? I'm not doing any harm, am I? Not yet. They're for an experiment of the professors. He don't like people tampering with them. All right, keep your hair on. I was any interested. Say, let's get this locked in before the cop comes back. No, this is too much. I only want a teeny weeny piece. And just a snack. Peter says you've got to eat it all up. But I'm full up to me high watermark already. What, you back again? Funny things to have around the house, I must say. Are you looking at me? They look like Egyptian mummies. Still, everyone to his own taste, I suppose. What are you talking about? There's a van outside. They're unloading a lot of mummies. I could have sworn they were dead bodies, Miss Hill. <laughs> 
Well, a mummy is a dead body, isn't it? I tell you, there's some queer things going on and I don't like it. Wicked. Say, am I glad to see the last of these. There's a cop snooping around. Don't bother about the cop amongst you. Yeah. I'll take care of him. Blimey. Only Harper. Oh, I don't know how I got through it. I don't know how you're going to get over it. that young man up somewhere until we can dispose of him. He's liable to become tiresome. She'll be all right. Rida, let me know when she has fully recovered and move her to the laboratory. the old station or the new station? I don't mind whether it's an old station or a new station. The station! We've got a very nice fire station. I don't want the fire station. I want the police station. Will that one do? Oh, I've come to report the theft of our car. It was stolen by some fellow from behind the iron cut. Oh, wait here, will you please? Sir. Humphrey, you can't drink that here. Can't I? I'm going to have a jolly good try. Wacko! Oh. Police! Police! Snakes alive! Have I been christened or launched? I'm sunk, I'm swamped, I'm a drip! <laughs> Police, police! Here, what do you think you're doing? Come on once, come on once, all of you. Here, lot. Let me go. Take your hands off that officer or I'll run you in for contempt. But it's the I tell you. I found him and the girl you're looking for. He'll do her in, I tell you. Come and save her before he does her in and turns himself into a bat like his brother did. Are you crazy? Yes, no, I mean, hurry, hurry. Bring her over here. Bring her over I'm telling you. Excuse me, this is no time or place for slap and tickle. I want you to come and get him before he does her in. Who's going to do who in? The vampire and that girl, Miss Watson's name. He's got a title back on me in his lap, lap, lap. 
in his chemist shop. Oh, save her, save her, before he does her in and turns her into a real mummy. Sergeant, she smells of gin. Of what? Gin. Who does? You do. Are you addressing your remarks to me? Yes, I am. Why, I've never touched a drop. Why, you're pickled in it. Say that again. Say that again. You're pickled in it. Are you aware to whom you are addressing those insulting remarks? I'm a lady, I am a lady, and I defy you to prove it. Sergeant, take her with yourself. Blimey, you could bring her out like a bard, Claude. Don't be so insulting and personal. Drunk and disorderly. Drunk and disorderly? Me, drunk and disorderly? Why, I've never drawn a sober breath in my life. I came here to tell you to get a vampire before he turns himself into a bat. Your bat's all right. I'm going to run you in for assaulting an officer. Drunkenness and insubordination. Oh, you are? Are you? Yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, I am. Oh, get off of me, open up. I'm a respectful lady, and I say... Silence! To... Name. Riley, and don't you shout at me. Silence! Address. 14 Russian Road. Well, it's a false alarm. Call yourself policeman. I'll teach you to manhandle an old woman like me. You blue nosed baboons. I'll save her myself. Yes, Master. You're among friends. Among friends? Now try and remember. Where did you leave the chart? You know the chart, I mean. Your father gave it to you to take to the British Foreign Office. There it is, the copy, all nice and strong. Thank you, thank you. Oh, say, doesn't this room smell stuffy? Mrs. Riley, please go to bed. There is a good soul. A good soul? And yet it arrives your little group free. Please go, you're disturbing my patient. To bed. going to tell me where you left the child. Now, where is it? There you are, Paul the Winners, and a nice new murder in Mortlake. Get out! Get out and stay out! I don't ever want to see you again! Go, woman, go! <coughs> where is it? in all my life. That man's a monster. A monster. I thought he was keen on you. <laughs> Leading me up the garden path with his steaks and his liver. The double twitching son of a sea serpent. And now he'd been and gone and sacked me. Sacked you? Oh, Mrs. Riley, don't say I've got to sleep on my own again. Kitty, look. It's her. Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. Read it. I broke my glasses. Riddle of missing girl, Miss Julia Loretti, was bringing with her a chart of an important uranium deposit. Yes, that's right, I heard him. It was all about a chart. He was trying to excavate inflammation from her. Here, listen to this. The chart? Yes. Where is it now? I haven't got it. I know. But where is it? The police are looking for a man named Anton Deschamps, who they believe may assist their inquiries. They... They're all in it. They're all in it. Fear from Trina and that monkey monkey. They're all in it. Every man jack of them. They're locked. They're... Hello, Frida. We were just talking about you. Where are you going, Mrs. Riley? I'm going home. I've, I've got the sack. And I've got the sack, too. The master has changed his mind. You can't stay. Oh, no, I can't stay. I've been sacked. And one sacked, I stay sacked. Nobody's going to mess about with me. Besides, I'm glad I'm sacked. I like being sacked, I me do. Too. Nevertheless, you will stay. But I can't stay. I'm not going to stay. I belong to a union, I do. And I work 24 hours a day. Not counting Mondays to Fridays. Here. 
You can't work 24 hours a day if you belong to a union. Yes, I can. How? Because I belong to 24 unions. Oh. And I work one hour a day for each union. Oh, I see. Ma? Where is it now? I haven't got it. I know. But where is it? Yes, Master. We tried a shock treatment. Denny and the woman Riley have seen the evening paper. There is a picture of Miss Loretti in it. They know too much. Lock them up. I have. I will deal with them after Miss Loretti has spoken. They may have taken Dick Barton off the air, but the memory lingers on. How do you know it's going to lead to a secret passage? I'll tell you later. After this, I'll never lock a mouse up in a wardrobe again. How are we going to rescue Miss Loretti? I let you out to the front door. I'll cop the girl, you cop the copper, and we'll cop the lot. Wait till Excuse me. 
Patrick, you're hiding it. Not me. It's probably full of mummies. Come on, I'm still there. Mummy, mummy. Open the door, Miss and Daddy. Come on, let's get out the window, quick. Come on, open up. Break up through the window. Head them off. The Riley woman has disappeared, Master. Yes? The chart. I left it on board. It is in the purse's safe. At last. Nothing can stop us now. We leave for the Fernwood at once. Fernwood? That's the ship that Miss Loretti came on. Yes. We must tell the police. Order the car, Frida. Before we go, we must destroy all evidence, Master. Of course. He's nothing but an old vampire. A vampire? Yes, a vampire in wolf's underclothing. Oh. He told me his brother was a bat. Oh. Well, I'll go and fetch my Freddy, and you hang on here and keep guard. Come and help me over the wall. Come on, hold these. Come on, give me a leg up. Hold these. Oh. Realize, Miss Loretti, that I must dispose of you. But I have a horror of bloodshed. It's such a rage. What are you going to do? Look at this fuse. When it reaches the destructor unit, you will know no more. I can assure you it will be quite painless. <laughs> Goodbye. Woman found killed by a robot, an iron man. Yes, we make history. Poppycock in all my life. You've been seeing too many films. I tell you, there's murder in that house. Well, are you going to break in or not? Oh, well, without a search warrant, it's as much as my job's worth. It'll be more than your job's worth if you don't. Poor Mrs. Riley, she might be dying. She might be in need of a blood transfusion. Oh, all right. Well, be quick. Well, you come up to the station with me. The sergeant wants to poke his nose in. Well, then that's up to him. Well, be quick, then.
get you out of this. We'll soon get you out of this. Oh, you've got a pen knife. Have you got a spanner? You. you can't refuse. I'm here to save you. I'll save you, I will. You won't die, you won't die. Oh, no, no. Never mind about that. We'll talk about that later. I'm here to save you first. That's one loose. Get down there. Oh, but there, pull it out. Oh, you mean the fruit? Oh, this one. Cars B Division, calling all cars B Division. A black Humber Pullman, license number BRK504. Stop and detain occupants, that is all. to Tilbury Docks. A man known as Professor von Husen, believed to be making for SS Fernwood. He is dangerous. Stop and detain. That is all. Gone, boy. 